I'm the Lloyd Macedo speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com and who's Lloyd Macedo. Today the date is January 4th, 2016. Time right now is 3 in the afternoon. Just wanted to share with you a couple of resume strategies for the year 2016 for the UAE and Middle East market. Now you need to understand that uh, the UAE or the Middle East market does not operate like most other markets like the West or um, let's say Asia. Now for example here they have a lot of, a lot of requirements in resumes that normally other markets don't have. For example, they'll ask you for which nationality do you belong. They'll ask you for you to put your photograph. They'll ask you to even mention your gender or the religion. Now, uh, most uh, you know most markets in the Europe or in the West, they'll not ask you for your photograph. They don't care how you look. They'll not ask you for your religion or they'll not ask you from which nationality, what is your nationality, or they'll not ask you uh, to, you know, most of these other details that are normally being asked in the UAE market because you need to understand the Middle East market uh, um, is, it has just, just evolved or created itself. It's a totally new market. So there are a lot of rules which are being followed or a lot of expectations and people just blindly follow them. Like I've never understood uh, what is the point of anyone asking for their photograph. Uh, it still doesn't make sense. Um, I've spoken to a couple of HR people. They say we need to know how you look. There are some others who even mention their nationality and even mention their passport number, which I never found the uh, absolute reason why. Some people say we just want to know that what you're stating is accurate. So a lot of factors that come into play. So these are the 20 points that I've stated, uh, which would help any person who's searching for a job in the UAE uh, or in the Middle East get stand a better chance. The first one is you need to understand that the purpose of the CV is to stand out among many, many uh, documents. So first is the visual layout. So remember the design and the layout should stand out. It should be original, it should be new. However, one very important point here is do not, uh, do not overpower the CV or the content by your design layer. I've seen some designs which are so amazing, so shocking that sometimes the content gets lost and there's more focus on the design and layout. Unless of course you're going for a very creative position then it should be totally off the charts. Otherwise, make sure that it can keep anyone who is uh, conservative as well as someone who's modern, keep both of them happy because you do not know who's going to evaluate your resume. So first one is the design and layout uh, should be original, should stand out, but it shouldn't overpower the CV itself. The second one is content is king. Uh, irrespective, you can have the most spectacular design, the most amazing color, the most amazing uh, layout and design, whatever. However, remember this end of the day, it is not the a flowery design that will give you a job. Uh, content is always very, very important. You need to work very hard to make sure the content is, it, it is powerful enough for the guy to take the phone and want to call you. So content is king. That is point number two. Point number three is always be brief and to the point. Remember this, most of the decision makers, most of the HR people, they don't have time to read to fluff. And there are so many people who put so many fluffy words, so many uh, spectacular words which are totally unnecessary. And uh, some of them use words which are like a copy and paste from uh, the internet. Avoid doing that. Be brief to the point because people want you to tell them in a nutshell who you are, what you are and what you can offer them. Uh, point number four is offer an outline. It's very important to, uh, you know, um, give, give them an outline or, uh, you, you know, structure a CV or resume in such a way that there are these outlines which make it very easy for them to highlight, okay, whether it's education, whether it's work, whether it's your core competencies, whether it's your technical skills. So offer outlines in different paragraphs so it becomes very easy, the bulleted point, so you can see what is it that you're actually talking about. Uh, next one, point number five is always generate a sense of curiosity, a sense of interest. If you're, if you're, if, you know, if you're going to watch a movie, you'd watch a movie only if it is interesting. If you want to talk to a person, you'd like to know the person's interesting and not boring. In the same way, your resume also has to be pretty interesting. It has to be, it has to create the sense of curiosity where the guy says, wow, th if this is the resume, I wonder how this is, how is the person, I need to call the person here and speak to them. So don't offer too many things. It's more like a bikini. Just show enough to want them to be enticed as to want to see more, but don't show them enough. Uh, point number six is a summary of your meta details. A lot of resumes have a lot of unnecessary points as to what did they do when they started their careers, uh, un, uh, useless stuff like I uh, used uh, a PABX machine with uh, 25 lines. I used to um, you know, uh, coordinate with departments. 
Uh, I used to send telephone, uh, I used to send faxes, uh, you know, read emails. These are unnecessary details. Do not bore them with unnecessary stuff. Rather focus on the core key areas which offer the mega values. All these unnecessary, you know, minute bits which you're doing that do not offer value, just take it off your resume. Uh, point number seven is use conversational language and not flowery language. Um, you know, stuff like, you know, I... Uh, uh, through the decadence of my life span in the corporate uh, epochs of, uh, you know, I, I happen to read this, epochs of uh, 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 competitiveness, I am now subjugated to focusing on uh, being, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, focused about uh, achieving corporate uh, goals or something like that. Uh, I mean, what kind of nonsense is it? Just get to the point. Uh, you don't state your objectives. I want to climb the top of the corporate ladder when you are actually looking out for a job. Um, you know, I want this bullshit because uh, nobody buys it. And especially when you have 4,000, 5,000 CVs or resumes coming in for a single position, it becomes a bit boring and repetitive. Uh, number eight, speak your personality. Make sure that their resume matches your personality because the more it is like you, the more the person will feel he's talking to the person has advertised. It's more like having a... Uh, online dating profile or a marriage profile where the person is so amazing, such uh, such a photoshopped uh, photograph and such a photoshopped profile that when you meet the person, you're like, are you the same person who was working? Okay, come on. You know, it's like uh, advertising yourself as a Ferrari, but when you meet the person, it's a Toyota. So speak your personality, make sure it matches it. Um, point number nine is match the resume to your personality, but make sure that it matches the job. Uh, if in case, let's say, they are looking for someone who is... Uh, who has attention to details, don't make yourself as a impulsive person who likes to do things however they like without focusing on details. Um, it should match the job, obviously, because it should be a proper fit. So even though I tell people, like, make sure it matches your personality, don't make it so matching your personality that uh, you can't fit into the job. And uh, keep this in mind, if, it, uh, if the job doesn't match your personality, don't apply for it in the first place. Number 10, if this one is pretty important. Answer the question, uh, or rather your resume should answer the question, why me and not someone else? Because remember, this is competition. You're competing with other people. So it should have the key focus as to why they should select you and not someone else. So this should be stated in uh, the in the beginning, right in the beginning, right uh, at the top. Okay. Point number 11 is, it's very important to position yourself as an industry leader and not just a follower. Because if it's a follower, then there are so many followers. There are so many people they can employ. If you're looking uh, for the job, you need to position yourself. I'm the alpha male or I'm the person you should be employing and nobody else. Uh, then uh, point number 12. Now, here in uh, the UAE, many of them have photographs which are requested for. Please do not take a photograph that makes you look like a criminal, you know, mugshot. Show a little bit of class, show a little bit of uh, finesse, show a little bit of uh, smoothness. I mean, have something that you would put, like, say, let's say uh, when you're getting married, obviously you'll put amazing photographs. Show a little bit of, you know, a little bit of act and make it stand out. Otherwise, you know, it'll just look like someone give you two slaps, post you to stand in one place and this is the photograph that you're sending. I mean, it doesn't sound attractive. Many of them have mock shots as their photograph. Don't do that. Point number 13 is, Clearly state the expertise and core competencies. And when I'm talking of expertise and core competencies, do not say uh, the hardworking, dedicated, uh, result-oriented, or a team player. No, these are not expertise or core competencies. You need to evaluate the industry at which you're uh, looking forward to. And based on that industry, you need to state what makes leaders in them. You know, um, like for instance, now I'm a trainer. Now, if I were to mention my core competencies as NLP certified or, um, you know, advanced or train the trainer, nobody cares because there are so many NLP experts, so many life coaches, so many EQ coaches. Uh, I need to state something that totally makes me stand out from the rest. So obviously, I focus on uh, personal brand management, which is very, very unique, which nobody does. And uh, the end result is obviously uh, earning more money. So that is what people are looking for, something totally different and unique. Don't say that... Uh, Helping, uh, you know, I would be stupid if I would focus on saying, I help people find inner peace. Come on, that, that cannot be measured. So make sure that you state your expertise, expertise and core competences very clearly, uh, explicitly rather. Uh, point number four is avoid cliche and self-descriptive uh, words like hardworking, dedicated, focused, 
uh, determined, uh, you know, climbing the top of the ladder or whatever, bull like that. Because these cliches, I get put off the minute I read them. So make sure that you are intelligent enough to, to describe yourself in rather a very creative and original manner. Uh, point number 15 is always the three eyes sound interesting, sound intelligent, and sound immaculate. You need to, it's, it's more like you're trying to impress someone, so impress someone with this kind of intelligence, this interesting person, and this immaculate uh, persona by, by which they say, you know, this is someone who I would like them to represent my brand. Uh, point number 16, remember, less is always more. Don't just fall for the axiom that just because your, everyone sees these three pages, you need to have three pages. If you can mention anything worthwhile, even in one page, that's enough. But make sure that that one page that you mentioned is so power packed that the person should feel like, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, then point number 17 is have a unique selling proposition. It's very, very important because if you don't differentiate yourself from everyone else and highlight what is that unique factor that you have, well, the chances are, you know, you'll be like, why employ you? I can employ someone else. Uh, point number 18 is always sell yourself and not the company. Many people highlight the company in such a big way. They say, oh, I work for DHL, FedEx, or I work for Alphutheim, or I work for Citibank, or I work for Marlboro, um, or uh, Philip Morris. So it's a company. It's not you. You need to position you, and you need to highlight yourself as a brand, which is very important. Um, point number 19 is I tell people be sincere. Yes, you need to be sincere. You need to be uh, uh, very sincere when you uh, express yourself in the resume, but don't be too honest because uh, I've, I've seen some people who say, no, I can't take uh, nonsense from, uh, uh, you know, over-possessive boss or something like that. I mean, you, you can't say um, stuff which positions you as too honest. Let's say I, uh, I can't take pressure. If you say you can't take pressure, uh, every job, uh, you know, gives you pressure. So what do you do? So don't be overly honest because if, you know, scratching your nose is, uh, or digging your nose is something that you like. You don't, you know, explicitly tell someone, I love digging my nose. It's put off. And point number 20 and the final point is have a oomph factor. The oomph factor is like that one thing, that one magical thing that uh, makes you not average, not normal, not everyday. That, that, that thing is something you really need to dig deep and ask your coach or somebody to help you. So these are the 20 points that I would recommend in terms of resume strategies for 2016 for the UAE and Middle East market. These are my views and this is what I've always helped most of my clients. Uh, I hope this helps you and um, you know I'm sharing it for free and so apply this and see how it can help you. Share it with your friends. So live from livemacida.com and it's livemacida.com sharing these points. Have any questions, feel free to you know, send me an email, put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.